So the next concept that we are going to learn is the concept of sampling. I am sure in the introductory class I told you about sampling is a way that we convert a continuous time signal into a discrete time signal, right? We are having two types of signals. One type of signal is where signal is defined for each and every instant of time. Whereas in the case of the other type of signal which is a discrete time signal, there the signal is defined only for some finite instants of time. So whenever you wanted to convert a continuous time signal into a discrete time signal, we are going to apply the sampling concept. We are going to apply the sampling concept. And why we are converting into discrete time? We are converting to a discrete time because we know that when compared to continuous, discrete is the best way to transmit a particular signal. Not only transmit, even to store a particular signal, it is more convenient if it is in discrete time. Not only this, whenever you process any information, your discrete signal processing is going to have much more advantage when compared to the top analog signal processing. Okay, so it is easier and it is also convenient to do it. So therefore, we know these days, majority of the our communication that we are doing or majority of the storage that we are doing or majority of the processing that we are doing is not analog, is not continuous, it is discrete or digital. So therefore, there is a need to convert whatever information that we are having in the form of digital or discrete so that we can store, transmit or process the information. So that is the reason why, that is the reason why we change the information which is continuous to the top discrete. Okay. And this particular process of doing it is what we call as sampling. Now, because I told that yes, it is more convenient and it is more comfortable with discrete, we should not randomly do the sampling. Sampling is also something we should have been done with a, a uniformity and also that you should have more number of samples to relate with your information. Yes, you have done samples, I mean, yes, you have done sampling, but if you don't have sufficient data which re represents your true information. Okay, for example, if I consider a sinusoidal, if I consider a sinusoid, if I consider a sample here, if I consider a sample here, if I consider a sample here, maybe I'll be having three samples. But I don't know whether this is sinusoid or not. It means that, yes, I have done a sampling in this case, but this information may not represent your true information. This information may not represent your true information. It means you should not do the sampling according to the way we want. Ultimately, what is, inform what is important for us is that whatever information that we already have, that has to be conveyed properly. Whether you are storing it, whether you are transmitting it, that has to be conveyed properly. Okay, so therefore, we follow a technique called as sampling theorem so that we are aware that once if you wanted to reconstruct back your original signal, if you want to reconstruct back your original signal, you have enough data which is available. You have enough data which is available. So as we know that sampling is a process which converts a continuous time to discrete time signal and we follow the process called as sampling theorem so that we can reconstruct back the information whatever we are trying to uh, discretize here later on we are in a position to reconstruct it back we follow the technique called as a sampling theorem so we will go into the sampling theorem for that there is a derivation we have to look into the derivation of it okay so let us consider that i am having an input called as g of t a signal called as g of t and the signal is something like this the signal that I am having is something like this. And if I am applying the Fourier transform on it, I will get its frequency. I will get its frequency domain. And it is changing with respect to the top omega. So we are having a time domain which is something like this. And we are also having a frequency domain which is something like this. Having a maximum frequency of omega, omega n. Okay. So now I wanted to discretize this one. I am trying to discretize this using the impulses using the impulses and let us consider these impulses are having the area of one the impulses are having the area of one and they are present at 0 ts 2 ts 3 ts 4 ts 
and here it is minus Ts, minus 2Ts and so on. So my purpose here is that I wanted to multiply with this particular signal so that I can only have the samples of that particular signal. Okay, so therefore I am taking the train of impulses. I am taking the train of impulses with each impulse having an area equal to the top 1. Now before applying Fourier transform, I know that I can apply Fourier transform on periodic signals also. We have seen what is going to happen when you are applying the Fourier transform on a periodic signals. Okay, so before going to Fourier transform, let us let me ask you what is the Fourier transform or mean what is the Fourier series of the signal? Can you please tell me what is the Fourier series of the signal? If you want, you can look into your notes if you have attended the class of Fourier series. If you are having the amplitude value of A, then our Fourier series that we had was A by T. The Fourier series that we had was A by T, right? It was something like this. Yes or no? It is A by T, A by T. So here A is 1. So I can write 1 by T, 1 by T everywhere. But this is only Fourier series. But I want a Fourier transform. This is Fourier series. I want Fourier transform. What is the relation between Fourier series and Fourier transform? Okay. So this is the relation that we have learned that the Fourier series and Fourier transform for a periodic signal is related like this. That the Fourier transform of the same train of impulses will be 2 pi times root of ck. Will be 2 pi times root of ck. So what happens here? 2 pi, 2 pi, everywhere I'll write 2 pi. Now these samples will be represented as impulses. The samples will be represented as impulses. Here it is Ts, 2 Ts, 3 Ts. Here it is going to be 0, omega s, 2 omega s, 3 omega s and here it is minus omega s, minus 2 omega s and so on. Now please tell me, if I wanted to multiply these two, if I wanted to multiply these two, the same information I will be having, whatever it is. Now, the information will be represented by its samples. The information will be represented by its samples. So, obviously what I am doing here is the multiplication. I am trying to multiply the signal G of T with a train of impulses, right? I am trying to multiply the signal G of T with a train of impulses. When I do that, I am going to have an information which is something like this. I am having an information which is something like this. Okay, so this is Fourier transform. Now, when I do multiplication in the time domain, what should I do in the frequency domain? If I do multiplication in the free time domain, we know f of t multiplied, I mean f of t is having the Fourier transform as f of omega, g of t is having the Fourier transform as g of omega. If I multiply these two, then of course, there will be a convolution in the frequency domain. And how the convolution will be 1 by 2 pi times the top, f of omega multiplied by, I mean, convolved with the top, g of omega. f of omega convolved with the top, g of omega. Correct? So what happens here is that, there will be a convolution between this train of impulses and the, the frequency domain of the signal. Train of impulses and the frequency, I mean, frequency domain of the signal. Now please tell me one thing. Okay, please focus on the class and just tell me one thing. That, let us forget about all these impulses. Let us forget about all these impulses. Whenever I try to convolve the signal G of omega with this impulse, what am I going to get? Whenever I try to convolve G of omega with an impulse which is present at omega is equal to 0. If an impulse is present at omega equal to 0, I can write like this. Let me consider the area is 1 as of now. Let me consider the area is 1. The convolution of any signal with the impulse will result in the same signal will result in the same signal okay there will be a lot of confusion between multiplication and convolution g of t multiplied by del of t is going to be g of 0 multiplied by del of t but g of t convolved with del of t is going to be g of t itself it's going to be g of t itself 
Similarly, in the frequency domain also doesn't matter what the independent variable is. Right? So, g of omega multiplied by del of omega is going to be g of 0 multiplied by del of omega. But I am not doing multiplication here. I am doing the convolution here. Okay? So, it's going to be g of omega convolved with del of omega which will be equal to g of 0 multiplied by del of omega. I mean, sorry. It's going to be g of omega. Right? It's going to be g of omega. So, g of omega convolved with top del of omega is going to be equal to the top g of omega. So, I can write it as g of omega. Right? So, can I say that if I convolve the signal with this particular impulse, it will be the same information? So, here you are having the area of 2 pi by t and you are having 1 by t, right? 1 by 2 pi. When you are multiplying here, there is a convolution with the 1 by 2 pi. So, 1 by 2 pi and 2 pi gets cancelled out. So, there will be a 1 by t here. Is this clear to all of you? If I consider a unit impulse, then it's correct. But it's not a unit impulse, it's having an area of 2 pi by t. But already there is 1 by 2 pi here. So, 2 pi 2 pi gets cancelled out, I will be having 1 by t. So, 1 by t multiplied by g of omega. So, whatever amplitude you are having, for example, if I consider here it is 1, it's going to be 1 by t here. Is this clear? Having the lowest frequency of minus omega m and the having the highest frequency of plus omega m. How the area of the impulse is 2 pi by t? It is because of the fact that when we considered the Fourier series of the train of impulses, we got a by t. a in this case is 1, so it is 1 by t. But we are not taking Fourier series, we are taking Fourier transform. The relation between Fourier transform and Fourier series is that if you already know the Fourier series, which we already know, which is 1 by t, the Fourier transform is going to be 2 pi divided by t. Okay? So every impulse is going to have the area as 2 pi by t. Okay, so I think it's clear that whenever I'm going to convolve this function with an impulse, I'm going to get the same information. Right? Now, what I'm going to do, the same thing I'm going to do with the remaining impulses also. So here, can you please tell me where do we have an impulse? Omega s. So if I have a unit impulse at omega s, can I say it as omega minus omega s? If I have an impulse at omega equal to omega s, can I write it as del of omega minus omega s? Forget about the area of it. Okay, that is what we have learned, right? When you are having an impulse at omega s, we can write it as del of omega minus omega s. Now, convolved with the of g of omega. Can you please tell me what it is going to result in? g of omega convolved with del of omega minus omega s. We are trying to apply what we have learned in LDA systems. So, what, it, what we are doing in sampling, we are, apply, uh, we are applying the concept of Fourier transform, we are applying the concept of convolution. Very good. So, it is g of omega minus omega s. It is g of omega minus omega s. Very good. And of course, you will be having a 1 by t because there is a 1 by t here. There is a 1 by t. So, basically g of omega minus omega is nothing but a shifted version of this. How much we are shifting? It is a shifted version of it. We are shifting it by omega s. We are shifting it by omega s. We are delaying it. That's why I am adding the value of omega. We are, at, I mean, we are delaying it so that we are adding the value of omega here. So the lower limit, this becomes omega s. The center part is going to become omega s. Here it is omega s minus omega m. Here it is omega s minus omega m. And here it is omega s plus omega m. And of course, it's 1 by t here. And going ahead, I'll be writing the same thing. If I convolve with it of 2 omega s, there will be again the same thing. With the center of 2 omega s. And the same thing to the other side also. If I convolve with this particular impulse, I'll be having a, an advanced signal. So, when I am multiplying here, I am trying to convert a continuous time to a discrete time. So, whenever I am trying to convert a continuous time to a discrete time, what is happening here? What is happening here? Whenever I am trying to convert an information from continuous time to discrete time in one domain, please understand that whenever I am trying to convert a signal from continuous to discrete in one domain, in the other domain what is happening? 
in the other domain the information is going to become periodic in the other domain the information is going to become periodic please again i'm repeating once again that whenever you are trying to convert a continuous time signal to discrete time this is what i can say it as discretization this is what i can say as discretization so whenever i convert a continuous time to discrete time then in the other domain there will be periodicity which is going to be introduced there will be periodicity which is going to be introduced is this clear to all of you so whenever i'm sampling here in the other domain the periodicity is going to be introduced the periodicity is going to be introduced please note it down quickly so please understand so what i'm doing here is that when i convolve here a convolution of g of omega with an impulse is going to result in the same information g of omega convolved with del of omega is going to be g of omega only and why are we having 1 by t here here because the area of the impulse is going to be 2 pi by t so you'll be having 2 pi by t and also having 1 by 2 pi there will be 1 by 2 pi so 2 pi is going to be cancelled i'll only be having 1 by t so 1 by t g of omega converted to del of omega it's going to be g of omega only so i'll write the same g of omega over here and then what i'm going to do i'm going to convert the g of omega with a shifted impulse i'm going to convert g of omega with a shifted impulse so it is going to result in the shifted shifted signal it's going to result in the shifted signal similarly if i'm convolving this with the double shifted then there will be a double shifted signal then there will be a double shifted signal okay so there is a reason why we are having 1 by t here 